I want to show you one more example of this incorporating open strings within a series of chords in the key of G. So let me go here. This is all going to be in the key of G. Now, it's in G when it's open. You remember, you can use a capo to change keys, but I'll show you in an open position here. So remember, you want to go and find the ones and fives. You can use one of these. You can use both of them. You can use one for, you know, one chord. You can use one, uh, one for another. But in this example, just to make sure that it's absolutely visually clear for you, I'm going to incorporate both of these notes. So here we go. If you were to go and play a G chord, it's going to look like this. Modern way again. And these two notes here are going to be open. Remember, just like we saw on the previous. And these two notes happen to be, this is the one. And this note is the five. One and the five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these two ringing open for all of these chords. I'm going to show you a set of chords now that we use all the time for our worship right now. And uh, as you play this, you'll not only uh, learn a new way to play in the, in the key of G, but it will also visualize and demonstrate <clears throat> what this incorporating open strings is all about. So here we go. Oh, by the way, for this example, what you don't want to play is this low E string. You don't want to play this. And you don't want to play this high E string. So all these chords that I'm about to show you only take place on the middle four strings. Okay, so you got to mute these. All right, here we go. So here is the first. And I'm going to kind of show you this backwards here. So here we go. This is the number one chord. So you're going to play these or fret these two notes while keeping this one and five open. By the way, this note is a, is a G note. And you're going to need to, when you fret it, you're going to need to kind of use your fingertips so that you don't mute these two strings in the middle. Here's one. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly um, because you can always go back and rewind to memorize it. But there is the one chord. Here is the seven chord. It just moved down. Now this is in a flat seven, so it's unlike the other families of chords where I include a flat seven. I'm not including it on this one. This is just seven. And the reason why is you'll be able to kind of use these chords melodically as well. I think you're really going to like this. So here's the six chord. Looks like that. Here's the five chord. Five chord looks like that. Now, these two notes are ringing for all these chords. They'll never change. Here's the four chord. Here's the three chord. And here is the two chord. Two is a little tricky because you're going to open, you're going to have three open strings because this open A is the two of the key of G. Okay, so one's here, two starts down here, three it climbs up. Now there's an interesting thing I want you to see. You see two is a minor by default, right? So the minor has this pattern. It's just one fret away. This B string is one fret away. Three is a minor as well. You see it's one fret away from this note. But watch what happens when you get to the four, five, and ones, which are major by theory. Major is two frets away. 
Five is a major, two frets away. Six is a minor, minor, one fret away. You see a pattern, recurring pattern happening here? Seven is a diminished, but if you're only looking at the thirds, it is a minor because it uses a minor third. So it uses this minor pattern. Now watch, one is a major, one has this major pattern. So that's one way to memorize these. It's incorporating musical theory in, in just how you play and memorizing patterns. Okay, so now if you were to play those chords that I just showed you over a song, over a numbered chart or a progression, it would sound incredibly modern. It would sound very pleasing to the ear too because as you switch, everything's going to sound smooth because these two strings are going to be open all the time. And um, it's going to have this kind of open sound, like I said. And uh, it, everything you play, no matter what chord, it's going to remind you the key that you're in. That's kind of what these uh, incorporating open strings will allow for you to do too. It just kind of gives the listener a uh, reference of where, remember, we're in the key of G because one and five will always be there to remind people and one and five of the G uh, key. All right, now what happens, let's say, I'm gonna go back, take this off. You don't always have to use both one and fives. Remember, you can just use one of those. Now, I think if you choose one, playing the open one is gonna have a different sound than open five. Now you can use either, but I think using the one always will be kind of, it'll fit better just because one is the most important note of a key. So if I were to do that, now watch what I can do. I can go over here and I can now go and erase this five. If I were to erase this note and I were to go and mute this string as well. So now I'm only gonna play three strings, this A string, this G string and this B string because this G string is a one. Well, you can totally go and do that. Um, and the way you would have to do that is whatever finger is fretting this A string, you would need to just drape it so it slightly touches to mute this um, D string. So there's a little bit of learning curve there, but if you were to do that, now let's look at the chords. So here's a one chord. Same fretting, but only one of the strings is open. Seven's gonna look like that. Six is gonna look like that. So the chords look exactly the same. Five looks like that. Four looks like that. Three, two, and back to one. But that's going to sound a little different because you're only incorporating one of the open strings, which is a one. So that is a great way for you to visually see how you can incorporate open strings with a series of chords uh, and learn to be creative to create a certain voicing and uh, a unique modern tone.